when a nickel sells for $1.6 million, how can buyers be sure that they're getting what they pay for? One way is to come to the Numismatic Guarantee Corporation of New Jersey. It is one of the few companies in the world that is trusted to grade coins. The grades will be decided by these judges. Okay, I'm going to put it in my head, please. The highest grade is Mint State 70 points. That's for a coin that is absolutely flawless. Great luster. Hardly any marks. High points are nice. Great rim. Great eye peel. Particularly under the, the coin is a 1907 $20 gold piece. This is a classic coin that is very scarce in higher grades of mid-state condition. Each grader first examines a coin by himself. He judges it only against others of the same type. He may spend hours, or just a few seconds, on a single coin. Then he decides on a grade. I personally have seen uh, and graded uh, over six million coins and handled every major rarity, including coins that have sold for millions of dollars. The judges have come up with three different grades for the same coin. It's the market, not the graders, who determine the dollar value of a coin. But the graders know that they can have an enormous impact on price. There's situations that a difference in one point on a coin can be ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars between one grade and the other. is just doing it a disservice. It's clearly a uh, gem, fully lustrous. I feel comfortable at Mint State 65. I agree. agree. Mint State 65. With a grade of Mint State 65 points, this coin will be priced at $20,000. After coins are graded, they're vacuum sealed to guarantee authenticity. Some owners will be pleased with their grade, others devastated. We get a lot of them back because dealers will break them out. They're unhappy with the grade or they get sold to another dealer. They'll break them out of the holder and send it back and try to get a higher grade. In fact, they're because so much is at stake, a grader's decision can generate a lot of conflict. I've had people threaten me. I've had people yell at me at coin shows, over the phone, and I try to remain calm. I've heard it all. I know all the tricks. Um, it's, it's human nature. The worst trick that graders see is actually a serious crime. Counterfeiting. There's tons of counterfeits out there. These things end up in tree stumps. They end up in the back of old furniture. They end up in chairs. They, they end up in grandma or grandpa's collection that they've had for a long period of time. Skip Fazari is one of the country's best counterfeit detectors. Today, he is examining what appears to be a valuable Morgan silver dollar. If you take a look at the center of the R on this coin, you'll see a raised lump of metal. In the leaves right above the R, right here, you'll see one of these nice round depressions. The depressions appear when a coin has been made by pouring hot metal into a mold. Genuine U.S. coins, as we have seen, are struck on presses which don't leave these marks. Any place on the coin where there's a small area or of an intricate design, for instance the denticles of this coin, those are the little teeth around the rim, are places where these bubbles tend to get trapped and they'll show up on the finished coin as raised little lumps. Most people would be fooled by these things, and that's what gives me, for instance, that's why I have my job. Surprisingly, one of the most counterfeited American coins of all time is a penny. 
but it's a very rare, very valuable penny. The penny was designed by Victor David Brenner, whose initials are on the reverse side. Most VDB pennies have no mint mark and are worth only a few dollars. But those that carry the tiny S of the San Francisco mint can be worth much, much more. What the fakers do is they take a standard 1909 VDB coin, which is worth the 10 to 20 dollars, and add the S to it and produce a coin that's worth several hundred dollars to a collector. In one case, we've seen the S put on with plain old modeling glue, and when we took a little acetone to clean the dirt around the mint mark, the S came right off on the Q-tip. One of the most amazing counterfeits ever involved huge amounts of money. And these were state-of-the-art fakes that were fooling just about everybody in the country. The Rolls-Royce counterfeit. The real version of this coin can sell for as much as $50,000. It's the 1907 High Relief Double Eagle $20 gold piece. Only 11,000 of these coins were ever made, a tiny number by mint standards. When a number of them began to appear on Skip Fazari's desk, something didn't seem right. I came upon this mark in the claw and we'll see right here. It looked like a skull and crossbones to me, but the director, when he looked at it, said, look, this looks like an Omega sign. Sure enough, it looked like the Greek letter Omega. Perhaps this counterfeiter was so good that he was signing his work. The counterfeiter, dubbed the Omega Man, may have produced over 20,000 double eagles. That many real coins could be worth more than $300 million on today's market. What gets the counterfeits in tr counterfeiters in trouble in many cases is they get greedy. If they would have only made five, six, or a dozen of these coins, they possibly would have passed detection for a long period of time. Ironically, even though these coins are fakes, collectors still buy them as works of art. The price? Around $800. The master counterfeiter, the mysterious Omega Man, is still at large.